How many of you like baseball? Show of hands. How many of you think that pitching is the most interesting part of the game? Um, as a pitcher, obviously, I think it's the most interesting part, and I'm kind of heartbroken by the <laughs> lack of love I see in the crowd. But, um, well, we're going to discuss how pitching works, like the actual physics behind why the ball does what it does when the pitcher lets go of it. Uh, we're going to go through why the setup is important and how it builds up the energy for the flight of the ball, how the delivery actually transfers all that energy to the ball and sends it towards home, and why the ball can do some crazy stuff after it's on its way in. Now, another question that uh, somebody can answer. What lets everybody else know that the pitcher's the most important player on the field? They're in the middle. That is a good answer that I did not think of. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you are a pitcher, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody else have a different answer? Well, my thought is because they're standing higher than anyone else on the field is. That's very important because that's going to be used to generate potential energy. As gravitational potential energy, it, just because of where they're standing, they already have an advantage over the batter. And potential energy is measured by U, which is the symbol for potential energy, is uh, mass times acceleration due to gravity times height. Now, the pitcher's mound uh, was originally actually just a box that was sitting on the ground and the pitcher stood inside of a box and threw it to home plate. <coughs> but then they realized that we can throw harder if we stand higher and stride down towards home plate. So they moved <coughs> down really high and depending on where you were or the pitcher's preference, mounds were all different heights and lengths and everything. But after, um, in the 1960s, uh, Hitting got really, really low because pitchers were had so much of an advantage. So they set a standard at 10 inches above the plate, and it slopes off one inch per foot. I got that data from BaseballReference.com. The windup is the next part when the pitcher's already standing on the mound. Uh, it builds up the potential energy for the pitch that he's about to let go. Uh, as you can see here, the leg bend is generating elastic potential energy, almost as if you're stretching a spring. Uh, it converts that energy from chemical energy that's already in your body from food and what you've eaten during the day, or energy drinks like Red Bull. And the twist of the torso also brings all of that energy in. That's also potential energy, as you can see from the U, but it's measured as 1 half K, which is a spring constant, X squared. And the X is the displacement of the material that's flexing. During the delivery, all the energy that's already been built up by the bending and the height is then converted into kinetic energy by the put pitcher pushing off with their legs and twisting. And uh, the, some of the energy is also created into for torque, which is when force acts on a radius, as you can see by the T equals F cross R. The cross shows that the force is most powerful when it's exerted at 90 degrees from the reference angle, which means a pitcher has the most power when his arm is straight up and down like this. But a lot of people decide to pitch from different slots because of a reason that will be explained in the next section. And also there's the conservation of momentum, which explains why the ball travels so quickly out of the pitcher's hand. Uh, momentum is equal to mass times velocity. And since the pitcher is moving with a certain velocity when he lets go of the ball, but he weighs a significant amount more than a baseball does, the ball has to come out with a significantly higher velocity than he's moving in order to keep momentum conserved. See here on the <coughs> picture on your left, you can see the uh, kinetic energy being made by the drive with the leg. And in this picture, you can see that there's a lot of torque on the elbow there, which might lead to him having to get Tommy John. <laughs> now once the ball in flight, ball is in flight, it naturally has a, an overall downward trajectory because pitchers are generally taller and they're already standing 10 inches above home plate. So they have to throw the ball downward to get it into the strike zone. Also, forces act on it that are, create, that are made by something called Bernoulli's principle, which says that any, 
fluids with a higher velocity have lower pressure. And that creates magnus force because the ball's spinning that accelerates the air. So the fastball spins backwards and it's pulling the air with the seams upwards over top of it, which accelerates the air above the ball, which helps it rise and stay in the air. A curveball, on the other hand, which is spun the opposite way, has the exact opposite effect. It keeps it in the air for a while, but then the force overtakes it and it causes it to dive sharply. That information is from Encyclopedia Britannica. Here you can see basic diagrams of the fastball and the curveball as they come out of the hand. And basically how a curveball works. Inclusion, the setup builds the energy because they're standing higher than the plate <coughs> and they generate elastic potential energy. The delivery turns all of that energy into kinetic energy and imparts forces on the ball. And once it's in flight, the ball reacts to the forces imparted upon it by working with magnus forces and by going through the air. And sometimes all of the pitcher can get all of this to work together. And sometimes it just doesn't. When that happens, you get this. <laughs> <laughs>